Hello, um, my name is Michelle. I'm an intensive care nurse and the aim of this short video is to give you, the student nurse, an introduction into the intensive care unit. If you're starting your placement in intensive care, this video will give you an example of an everyday situation of, um, of being in intensive care. The intensive care unit is home to the sickest patients in the hospital. In any hospital that you go to, you'll always find your sickest patients in intensive care. For this reason, your patient requires one-to-one -one nursing. This will be something that you may never have experienced before as a student nurse, as this rule is unique to intensive care. The reason being, as I previously said, that we have the sickest patients and they require multi-organ support. So, Throughout the video, I'm going to show you the different equipment that we use in intensive care to support patients' organs. First off, I'm going to show you the infusion pumps, which you will find at each patient's bedside. The purpose of the infusion pumps is to ensure the patient has adequate supply of certain drugs that they may require. In intensive care, most of the patients will require sedatives, to allow us to provide care and to help the patient through the critical illness. As a student nurse, you can observe the nurse to ensure that there is always adequate supply of sedatives, paralyzing agents that may be required for your patient. In addition, inotropes, which are drugs we use to um, allow a patient to have adequate perfusion to their organs in relation to their blood pressure. These drugs may all be new to you if you've never worked in critical care or had a placement in critical care before and you will not be expected to have an in-depth knowledge already but it's something that you can learn about and enhance your knowledge around what happens to your patient when they deteriorate on the ward and then get moved to intensive care for critical care treatment. At each patient's bedside you will see a central monitor which will be connected to your patient. The central monitor will display the patient's heart rate, oxygen saturation, blood pressure, central venous pressure and respiratory rate. As a student nurse, you will be familiar with vital signs, assessing, recording and monitoring vital signs. However, you may not be used to having a patient that is continuously monitored. The reason we have to continuously monitor the patients is that when a patient is critically ill, they can have rapid deterioration. The sooner that you as a student nurse working alongside your mentor and co-mentor can establish the patient as having deterioration, you can respond quicker and have a better outcome for your patient. First of all, heart rate is monitored. Heart rate is something you will already be familiar with and intensive care is an excellent placement that allows you to develop and enhance your assessment skills. You will be encouraged to record patient's heart rate and learn about the abnormalities and how to respond appropriately to patients having abnormal heart rates. In addition, same with oxygenation levels, it'll be something you'll be familiar with from doing on the ward in previous placements or something you've learned about already in university. Oxygen saturations are monitored continuously to establish the patient's ox oxygenation level. This will be a good opportunity for you to learn more about oxygenating your patients and how to assess your patient as adequately oxygenated. Something that will be new to you in intensive care is blood pressure and how we monitor the blood pressure. So on the ward or in the community you may have been used to checking blood pressure using a cuff around the patient's upper arm. However, in intensive care we need to monitor the, the patient's blood pressure continuously. So we do that by using an arterial line. This is a small catheter that's placed directly into the patient's artery and gives you a time constant blood pressure. This allows the nurse to adequately assess the patient's blood pressure and give them inotropic support in the form of adrenaline or noradrenaline, drugs that we use to ensure the patient has an adequate blood pressure. In addition, we monitor central venous pressure, which is basically um, a tool or an extra aid that helps as part of your full assessment to establish if your patient needs extra fluid in their circulatory system or if they have too much fluid already. You will also be encouraged to record your patient's temperature the same you would in any other area and the main purpose of being in intensive care is that you the student can establish your, ass your assessment skills and be able to 
respond to an abnormality and how to have the best outcome for your patient. The safety equipment used in intensive care, some features are similar to what you would find in other clinical areas. The, the essential safety equipment pieces are oxygen supply, air supply and suction. It's so important at the start of every shift to ensure that your suction is working adequately and that your oxygenation is working. In each bed space we keep a cylinder of oxygen which you can see in the background. This is because all our patients are oxygen, oxygen dependent. If there was any interference in your oxygen supply through the main um, oxygen supply in the hospital, you need to have that reservoir of oxygen available immediately to allow your patient to have adequate oxygen levels. Nextly, I want to show you the ventilator. In intensive care, most of our patients will be ventilated. Something, this is something that will be new to you as a student nurse. You may have had some teaching around ventilation in university, depending on what stage you are at in your training. The ventilator takes over the role of the patient's um, inspiration and expiration involved in breathing. The ventilator is connected up to an air supply and oxygen supply and what it does is it flows oxygenated gas into the patient's lungs, allows for oxygenation of gases to occur and then the um, air is removed by the ventilator itself using a circuit for intake of air and outtake of air. The ventilator is connected to an endotracheal tube or a tracheostomy tube. These will be something that will also be new to you as a student nurse and we don't expect you to be competent or proficient in anything around ventilation while you're a student nurse. These are all skills that you develop post qualifying as a registered nurse. You will notice that in each bed space the patient will have a sink by their bedside. This is just to encourage adequate and effective hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is important throughout every area that you work in, but it's really important to reiterate how the intensive care patients are immunocompromised and more susceptible to infection. Therefore, ensuring adequate hand hygiene is essential when working as part of the intensive care team. This piece of equipment is known as a haemofiltration device. As a student, you may be familiar with the term dialysis, for chronic kidney patients to have their blood filtered and take over the role of the kidney. In an acute illness, patients often experience kidney failure and this is the role of the haemofiltration device. It allows us to remove blood from our patient, to filter the blood, remove the toxins and return the filtered blood back to your patient. While doing your intensive care placement, you will you will have the opportunity to learn about intertracheal tubes and tracheostomies. Here is an example of an intertracheal tube and a tracheostomy. These allow for a patient to have a patent airway when they are unable to maintain their own airway. This could be due to respiratory failure or a reduced conscious level. It's very important as a nurse that you do your safety checks at the start of each shift. This, what you'll see, is called a water circuit. This allows you to resuscitate your patient in the event of an emergency. It's mandatory that you have this by the bedside and readily available. This, was, this will be used when you have a patient that has an endotracheal tube or a tracheostomy. You attach it onto the tracheostomy tube or the endotracheal tube at the mouth and allows you to resuscitate your patient. In addition, you must have an amputation bag which has a, a mask on the top of it that you can create a seal over the, over the patient's nose and mouth and allows you to ventilate your patient like so, once connected to oxygenation supply. As a student nurse in the intensive care unit, you will have the opportunity to develop many of your core competencies and develop certain skills around assessment, monitoring and how to respond to changes in your patient's condition. In addition, you will have the opportunity to attend a monthly disciplinary team meeting every morning. For each patient, we have a core meeting in the morning to discuss the patient's plan for, for that day. 
You will be invited to attend as a student nurse, along with your mentor or your co-mentor. Present, you will have the consultant, the junior doctors, physiotherapists, the pharmacist, and members of the research team. And then you, as a student, along with your staff nurse, will represent the findings from your morning assessment and all together work to develop the best plan of care for your patient to allow for the best outcome. In conclusion, I hope you found this video useful and helps you integrate better into the critical care environment when you commence your placement as a student nurse. We welcome you and look forward to you beginning your placement and hope that you learn and achieve many of your competencies and have a positive learning experience.